Hi all and welcome back to the second episode of my editing series. Let's talk about the best kind of hidden future in Lightroom. Let's go! So welcome to my editing series. My name is Kasper. I'm an Estonian landscape and travel photographer and blogger, as it seems. And if you like the content, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified when I upload my next video. But on to the subject now. So what is this hidden feature that I'm talking about in Lightroom? To be totally honest, it's not hidden per se. But a lot of people don't know where it is, how to use it and what, what are the benefits of it. So the feature is called Range Masks. And you can use Range Mask with your adjustment brush, with your uh, graduated filter and your radi radiated filter. So let's see how it works and how we can use it in our images. So I have two images already selected in Lightroom for this technique and the first image we can see the sky is blown out a bit not that much but it's too too bright for me and the darks over the right side of the image I want to pull them up and give the icy bog lake some texture back so how can we do it we could pull down the highlights and uh, recover some lights from there we could pull down the whites to recover even more of the colors and and the textures in the sky and for the shadows and the dark water here we could push the shadows a bit and we could push the blacks a bit so everything is possible but the problem with this kind of general editing is that it affects the whole image and for example if i would want to only affect the highlights or only the dark water here it's really hard to select uh, you could try to select it with the adjustment brush but it's really hard to just narrow down like one part of the uh, luminosity range or one part of the color range in lightroom it's a lot easier in photoshop but we are today talking about editing in lightroom so let's reset uh, everything and try it a bit of a different way with graduated masks, radial masks and uh, adjustment brush. We resetted everything in this image and let's try to pull up the shadows of this image with the gradient mask. Let's pick the gradient mask, make a gradient let's say from here press O to see your mask it's kind of okay let's adjust it a bit like this and now I want to up the shadows and the dogs so let's try it it's working but the problem is it also pulling up the shadows from the grass in the foreground and the tree and the trees behind that and I don't want it so now is the time to use the range masks in Lightroom. So a lot of people don't know that there is a little button here, range mask. And first, let, let me delete the filter for a second. And first, when you open up your uh, graduated filter or your circle filter or adjustment brush, you can't actually see it that well. It's uh, range mask off and it's grayed out. So a lot of people just ignore it and don't use it and even don't know it exists. But if we do a new mask over the image, let's do the same mask as we did before, selecting most of the darker water. And now if you click on off, it opens up two possibilities for you. There's a color mask option and a luminance mask option. Let's start with the luminance mask option. So I'm gonna click luminance and now we can push show luminance mask so what's a luminance mask luminance mask is basically a mask where you select your luminance value 
from 0 to 100 and you select the part of it that you want to be affected by your edits. So what that means, for example, on this image where I want only the darker parts or the water here to be affected, I need to pull away from the lighter values. So I'm going to go to the right side slider and just start pulling it down. And you can see the mask upgrade live. And as you can see here, it already has taken out most of the highlights. So now when I click show luminance mask again, it goes off. And now if I start pushing the shadows, for example, most of the image that I'm affecting now are only the dark areas. And what that helps is that you can't uh, make your image look that flat anymore because you still will have your contrast of the highlights, but you can just pull up the darks a bit. And if we just toggle before and after now, this is before, this is after. It's a lot better because you maintain the dynamic of the image. So how would we go about the sky in this image? Let's make a new gradient mask. But for this time, let's try to make the gradient mask uh, fully like 100% all over the image. And for that, there's a really easy solution. Just go to left or the right side of the image. If you're on the right side, just click outside of the image and pull away from the image. And you can use shift to get 90, 90 degree lock on your filter. Let it go. And now we have a full coverage of a mask on an image. So let's take our luminance mask again. And now show luminance uh, mask. And now we want to only affect the brightest highlights of the image. So let's start pulling from the dark side to the right. And now you can see the mask is taking away everything that is dark. And the higher we go, the, the smaller part of the image will be selected. And now mostly only the highlights are selected in this image. And now we can let go. And now if we toggle the show luminance mask off, we can pull down the highlights. We can pull down even the whites a bit or pull down the... Uh, exposure, add a bit of saturation and now as you can see it only affects the brightest of the bright values. We can drag it up and down, try to adjust it a bit better, maybe you want it to affect a bit more and if you want the mask to be more precise then you can pull down uh, smoothness but usually I have the smoothness on 50% because for most things you don't need that under 50. And what the smoothness does, it just uh, works kind of like Gaussian blur in Photoshop. It just smudges the edges and blurs the mask out a bit so you won't have those hard edges coming over to other, other things and making halos and other bad things that you need to get rid of afterwards again. For me, usually I leave it, leave it at 50 and if I'm using it to select a subject, an animal, a person or something like that, then I can go lower. But usually, yeah, leave it at 50. So if we want, we can change our filter settings uh, because it's, the, it's a non-destructive workflow. And let's uh, just select our shadow filter again. And I don't like how it affects the highlights or the brighter parts of the tree at the moment. So if I toggle it on and off, you can see here it's pulled up the shadows a bit too much because I want uh, to have the contrast in the tree. So I'm gonna push show luminance mask again and I'm gonna pull down until I see something better. I think I'm gonna pull down also the smoothness for this, this edit, get it to so somewhere around 20 and let's push up the I think I'm gonna pull the range down to 5% which is the minimum so all the highlights and everything above 5% luminance is cut off so let's try how does it look now 
I think that's a lot better. And let's just, yeah, let's just push the shadows a bit. Yeah, by the way, that is my cat called Coco. Say hi. And don't bite me. Anyhow, I think this is a big change already for the image. And now we could do anything else we would want to do with the image because we have balanced out the exposures. I would probably make the image a bit cooler, just to cut out the yellows a bit, go to color grading or HSL. I think there's a bit too much uh, saturation in the yellows for this image. Let's pull down the yellows a bit and uh, and the oranges a bit, then it gets a bit more balanced and maybe push purples and blues for this image. And then we get kind of that morning magenta kind of feeling. All right, but that's what you can do with the luminance part of the range mask. I think this image is pretty good now. We have recovered the highlights, we have pushed up the shadows a bit and we have not touched the uh, middle tones of the image. So we still have the contrast and the dynamic of the image here. So it's not flat and it's not boring and you don't need to do like extra work. Now let's go and try out the second options of the range mask, which is called color mask. For that, let's pick another image. This is an image I shot in Tenerife in 2016. And those are absolutely amazing uh, sandstone beach cliffs or, or I don't know how to even call them. Basically rock formations on the beach. So let's try it out. Uh, if we would like to select these rocks only, or, or just make them brighter or change the hue a bit or something. It's really hard to select them like super precisely. We could do it with the adjustment brush, but it's not that exact and you still go over an edge or you could use the auto mask, but the auto mask will then leave some other darker or different color areas uh, unaffected. So, but we want to select only the colors that are brownish and yellowish in this image. So how we can do it is make a new adjustment brush and then start just, just masking the area again that we want to be affected in the, in the range mask. Let's just select everything which is the yellowish brownish stone here. I think that's all. And now we can uh, select the range mask again and go to color. So the color mask works a bit differently and there's a couple of ways to use it. First of all, let's take away the mask by pressing O. And now we have the color range selector. So a lot of people think that you can only select once with this and that's the place that's going to be affected. That's one color and that's another color and maybe this and maybe that. Actually, you could use the color selector tool on five different locations. So let's say we want the color from this area. Then we want the color from this and here and here and here. And now I think we have most of the area selected that we want. So let's try. Yeah, now we have selected most of the color ranges in this uh, rock formation. And how did I do it? I just push the first location. Then I hold down shift and add another color. And let's add this grayish brown here. Let's add this green kind of sea color here. And let's add, I think, how many do we have? One, two, three, four. Let's make the fifth one on the corner here. All right, now we have five colors selected and they represent the range of the rock that we have here to work with. And now we could do it, push the shadows, 
maybe change the hue to be a bit more red dehaze it or put some dehaze back on it push the blacks pull down the whites you can do anything and you can, as you can see we don't have any haloing and it just selects the colors that you want actually there's another way of using this tool also uh, let's just uh, push done and delete this adjustment and let's make a new adjustment brush and again press O to see your mask let's go over everything mask the area that we want to be changed and now let's uh, select the color again and pick the color range selector so you can press on the colors or the locations that you want to be selected uh, but the thing you can do is press and hold and you can pull a rectangle over an area of colors that you want to be selected so we can do one rectangle here there's even a rectangle little icon here uh, by the color picker let's make another one here let's make a third one here and let's make one here in the corner so let's take away the mask again with pressing go and as you can see we can do the same exact thing and if the selection has been a bit too rough and it has taken in colors that you don't want to be affected you can use the range mask and you can pull it down to include less colors and you can push it up to include more colors in the color mask so i think that's it for today i'll stop the tutorial here because i think it has been long enough and if you have any questions hit me up in the comments and i'll try to help you out so in general i hope this was helpful and that's how range masks or luminosity masks or, or color masks work in general and if you're not yet comfortable editing your images in photoshop uh, where the luminosity and color masks are a lot more precise and you have a lot of different plugins on making different luminosity masks and, and different selections in general then starting out with uh, the range masks in Lightroom is a perfect way of understanding how luminosity and color masks work so hope it was helpful if you like the content and like the editing uh, tutorials i do push the like button hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed yet and don't forget to knock on the notification bell to get notified when the next video is up from me thank you have a great weekend and see you next week.